These two players have played through the round of 32, 16-8, the semifinals, and they are now in the finals on Lost Temple. Kidos is a Terran player, very good Terran player, and Panerai has proven to be a very, very proficient random player in this tournament. As we can see, he is this game spawning as Zerg. Previously, I've only seen him play Protoss in the, in the games against Kiom, so we're going to have to see how he does against Kilos as Zerg. And let me just send a message very, very quick. Alright, here we go. Panerai. Spawning as Zerg. We're going to see how he does uh, on Lost Temple. He is right now in the 9 o'clock position as the pink Zerg and Kilos as the purple Terran at the 3 o'clock position. He is now moving out, of course, with his SCV to do the very, very standard thing. On his ramp, like I was saying earlier, you want to block off your ramp, typically against Zerg. Um, but he's just doing it to be safe because he doesn't know what race he's going against. So in case he goes against a Zerg, he's going to want to have his supply depot out of his ramp to complete that wall off. And uh, Panerai is scouting out this bottom position. He's going to find out uh, that there is nothing down here at the bottom. Let me just, sorry, talk into this guy right here. And of course, anyone can email me at frank.takecast at gmail.com for any questions, comments, concerns, uh, or if you want to talk about future tournaments or anything like that, uh, definitely email me there and we can get to talking. But we do see Kilos here. He has his barracks at his ramp now being made. And what sort of build is Panerai going to do? It looks like he is going to go for the 15 hatchery and probably uh, going to go for the 15 spawning pool, uh, definitely, right afterwards. So this is, you know, not a very aggressive build. He's not trying to do any sort of attack. Actually, he's being very, very greedy, getting two drones here before he even decides to get a spawning pool. So it's like a 15 hatchery, 16 pool which is uh, not typically what you see, it's very greedy, and if Kilos had decided to do any sort of really, really early aggression, which, which he had not, but if he had, then uh, Panerai would have been in trouble. However, Panerai should be able to get his spawning pool out in time, and all this means is that he has you know, more drones than you might typically see a Zerg player have at this point in time in the game. And if you look at the production tab, he is just consistently making, making more drones, and you can see he does have a small uh, drone advantage. Uh, against a Terran player, and sometimes, you know, you even see the Zerg player have less because they'll have spent a lot of drones on the hatchery, on the extractor, on the spawning pool, but in this game, you know, Kilos, uh, K uh, Panerai, rather, you know, was greedy enough to able to get those extra drones out before making that spawning pool. So that his hatchery is, in fact, almost about to be completed uh, right around the same time that the spawning pool was completed, so that's a really, really late spawning pool. And we do see uh, that reactor coming down, on the barracks and already a factory, so no early multiple racks aggression like Kiom was uh, want to, won't to do. But we do see that you know Panerai is going to go over to his base and scout out the fact that there is this reactor barracks and there are no there are two marines right now uh, on the field right here which are going to have to kill that drone. Taking a look at the income tab, you know, like I was saying earlier, uh, the incomes should eventually move into Panerai's favor because he is mining off two base. However, this mule was really, really good uh, in an early game to tilt the tide in terms of mineral uh, resource gain. Now, we do have the queen out, so we will be able to spawn larva and get more larva. And, of course, the metabolic boost is going out. Um, so, I mean, that just signals that we're not seeing any really, really early roach uh, sort of composition from Panerai this game. Instead, we're seeing mostly... Zerglings, and now we do see double Hellions, and he, if he goes to Starport, this will be a really, this is a classic build, going for double Hellions and then into Banshee, that's something we used to see a lot back in the early of the game, and even in the beta, and he's actually double Starport, if he does double Starport Banshee, I will be very, very surprised if that happens to be, you know, his, uh, his go-to build, if you do see these two Hellions out now, I know the Queens can, can do a lot of damage, but mostly Zerglings will have a lot of trouble, um, dealing with the Hellions, especially since they do not have metabolic boosts quite yet. Although we do see a Banding's Nest early on, uh, instead of what like a Roach Roar or something like that. And here come the the Hellions, and Panerai is doing the smart thing, blocking his ramp with his Queens to prevent the Hellions from coming up, but the Zerglings are just waiting for the metabolic boost. Now they do have speed, so they should be able to go around and surround the Hellions. The Zerglings do need to come down and support the Queens, but the Queens are you know easily, easily going to take out those Hellions, especially with the support of a Spine Crawler here. Um, 
So, you know, not too much damage really dealt by those Hellions. Another one coming in. Uh, these two are really going to have to flee because they cannot do too much. And they're here, the Zerglings, with speed. They should be able to come around and surround these Hellions, do all the damage they need to do, get into the hits off. And the Hellions were able to kill none of the Zerglings whatsoever. And now we do have two Starports up. And like I was saying earlier, classic build going uh, Reactor. Hellions in to Banshees. I wasn't expecting dual port Banshees, but that is a very, very interesting build. We're going to have to see if it pays off, um, although the lair for Panerai is almost going to be completed, which means even if the Banshees do come, he does have these queens here, and he will be able to get a an, a uh, Overseer in time to, to spot any Banshees if they get Cloak. However, these two Banshees will be able to do quite a bit of damage, because there are only two queens but a third queen is coming out. So Panerai really has his grounds covered. He, he has a queen, spine crawler, speedlings to deal with Hellions, and with this third queen, he should be able to, uh, especially with this fourth queen here, he should be able to deal with with uh, Kilos's Banshees. And perhaps, you know, look look what he's doing. He's getting these extra queens. Ma you know, I personally recognize the fact that after getting those reactor factories, it, it's a typical build to go for Banshees, and that is definitely what Panerai saw. So he got his lair up, he got his overseer out, and he knew to build extra queens without even seeing the uh, the Banshees coming to his base in the first place. He's tracking with his overseer in case I have cloak, they do not. But there are a lot of queens now, and are there any transfusers? There are no transfusers available, but there are more than enough queens to shoo off these Banshees. So Kios is not doing the sort of harass damage that he needs to be doing at this point. He was really going for doing more damage. That was his hope with the Hellions, which are great harass units because they do extra damage to, to Zerglings as well to to drones. And then with the Banshees, which can fly in, you know, cloak, but he's not getting what he needs to do. Panerai has always bases covered and is just ready for Kilos no matter what angle he goes in on. Now there are four Banshees here now at the back, so this is a very devastating force. They can do a lot of damage to the Queens, and look at them dealing damage to Queens. There's no Transfuse to be able to take out that Queen. Another Queen goes down, pulling back the low health Banshee, taking down another Queen here. There were five Queens, but all the Queens are being taken out. However, some of these Banshees, as you can see, are at low health. In fact, they were all at low health. The Queens finally managed to take out one, but there are still three Banshees in the Zerg base wailing away at the lair, and yeah, here it goes. It makes more sense to go for the drones, uh, which is exactly what they're doing. And there is now a Spire, and so Panerai is going to try and get five or so Spires, uh, five or so Mutalists to deal with these Banshees. And you can see these Zerglings are really not the Zerg player. All these drones are being sacrificed to these Banshees, as there are no Queens, there are no Spore Crawlers, and the Mutas are just not coming out in time to deal with the Banshees. The drones are just trying to run away and wait for the ba the mutilists to pop. So here are three mutilists now, uh, as well as another one from the top. So the mutilists are finally going to be able to shoo the banshees away, but not after losing a lot, a lot of drones. As you can see from the, the resources lost count, Panerai definitely was on the, the bad end of that bargain, losing up to five queens and a big amount of drones, which means that his economy is behind. But um. You can see here that he is down at least 10 drones. Well, he does have an expansion, so his economy is not too far behind Kilos. But I imagine Kilos does have a command center building somewhere. Yes, here it is, already upgraded to an orbital command. A couple of Mulas trying to do some damage, but there are too many Marines for the Mulas for us to be successful. Uh, but he did scout the fact that Kilos only just now got his expansion, so he knows perhaps he's not quite as far behind. Uh, as he could possibly be. And if you look at production tab, he's definitely droning up again to try and recuperate those lost drones uh, that he lost to those dual port banshees. <coughs> Kilos uh, now getting engineering bay, both for uh, marine upgrades, as you can see, his army is very marine heavy, and also for missile turrets, because uh, Panerai is definitely going to go for mutalisks, and uh, missile turrets will be very, very useful. And army as well. We might be seeing a Thor coming out. We do see that the uh, factory has been moved to a tech lab, so that would call for Thor being com coming out. But these uh, Mutalists are actually doing quite a bit of damage, surprisingly, even though there are so many Marines out. And the Marines actually accidentally attacked his own orbital command, so that was a little bit of a blunder right there. Now, there are a couple Banshees in this corner. If the Mutalists got a whiff of them, they could actually do a lot of damage. Can you silence them? And the Mutalists are coming up. If they see these Banshees, that could be bad news for Kilos, but they're hidden in a very good position, so most likely that's not going to happen. We do see that Panerai has a good amount of banelings, and he has very good creep spread, which is important uh, in dealing with 
Marines because the Banelings will be able to definitely catch up to the Marines in that case. And we just see Panerai moving back and forth with his Banshees, and Banshees moving closer and closer to those, uh, the Mutalists rather, moving closer and closer to the Banshees, but not going to spot them today. And we do now see a Thor coming out for Kilos. Panerai taking what Zerglings he has to destroy the destructible rocks so that he can uh, take his gold and uh, keep up that definitive income lead. As you can see in the income tabs, he, he is still ahead now, but uh, as Kilo saturates his new base, that should turn around. But you can actually take a look here at the Harvester count. Panerai did a great job at droning back up. Even after losing quite a bit to those Banshees, he is now over Kilo in Harvester count by 20. Which means, I mean, just take a look at the income. He has 600 or so more minerals per minute. It's really right now. Panerai seems to be playing better than Kilos at this point in the game. However, there are some missile turrets, which means these mutalists will have trouble to do any sort of harass right there. And of course, he cannot go and attack the marines, as uh, the marines just do ridiculous amount of damage for their cost. Uh, more Zerglings being produced. Once the Zerglings take down the destructible rocks, we will definitely see him taking that third base. And we're going to have to see what sort of tech. Uh, Panerai decides to go in because while it is possible to definitely just stay in the game, Zerglings, Banelings, uh, Mutalisk, we will see if he tries to go for Infestors or if he just gets the Infestation Pit to go for High for Blue Lords. And now we do see that these Banshees have moved in and are taking out this third base that Panerai was trying to set up. But if the Mutalisks fly in, they should be able to shoo off the Banshees and uh, the base is cancelled, but the Mutalisks will easily be able to come in Oh, never mind, because the Banshees do now have Cloak. He researched that at some point in the game, but we do have an Overseer um, that's actually out of place now, so that the Banshees will be able to go into the natural base of Panerai, and the Overseer needs to get back, otherwise those Banshees could do some serious damage. Uh, the Banshees are trying to focus on the Queen, but as soon as this Overseer gets back into range, he should be okay. As you can see, the Banshees are now taking out SCVs. They have six kills on this one, another kill on that one. But the Overseer finally makes it into range, kills one of the Banshees, but there's still one more Banshee. And Panerai does not have Overseer extra movement, so the Banshees really can outspeed the, uh, the Overseer. And the Overseer is actually sitting back, allowing this Banshee to rack up more kills. Six, seven, seven kills befe before being taken out. So right there, those two Banshees managed to take out 14 drones for Kilos. But even so, Panerai still has so many more Harvesters then Kilos, he just can re rebuild those drones at a ridiculous rate, having all these bases uh, with larvae stocked up. And if you look at the production tab, you see him building th even three more drones. However, there is now a huge army moving out for Kilos. Even though he had such an economic advantage, he spent all of his money, uh, so much of it at least, on drones. And now we have three Thors and a lot of Marines moving out for Kilos. And we need a lot of good Baneling play, and this is exactly what we're going to see. We have a full control group of Banelings. We have, what is this, 24 Banelings ready to hit those Marines. And um, Kilos knows it's coming. He scanned, he sees these Banelings, he has to watch out for them. The Thors do great, great damage, especially the Marines as well, towards the Mutalisks. But these Banelings, just a few of them, can completely decimate the Marines. And uh, Kilos is ready. He's separating his Marines. He's spreading them preemptively so that the splash damage of the Banelings will not be as effective as Panerai needs them to be. He's now taking out the Creep, which is also really important because it prevents the uh, Banelings from being able to do enough damage. And a couple Marines are stimming up to the top, which is great because, you know, Panerai cannot bring any of his army up top without going through the Thors. And here he comes. He has dropped the the Banelings everywhere, taking down all of the Marines and uh, using the Magic Box technique on the Mutalist to get over the Thors, and the Thors are being taken out right now. The Banelings are more than enough to take out these Marines, uh, and unless these, if these Mutalists do not clump up, they should be able to take out this Thor just fine, Magic Boxing once again over that Thor, taking out the Thor, and it looks like Panerai did come out on top in that game. However, there are a lot more Marines coming in, and we need more units coming out. Look at the production tab. We do see there are 20 Zerglings coming out, which should be enough to take out these Marines, uh, as long as they get good hits in. And there are a couple Mulas as well, so this aggression should be taken out. But can he take out the Hatchery? The Hatchery is at very low health, 200 health, you can see, but he's not quite enough, uh, which means Panerai does still have his third base mining extra gas right now. But we do have these two final... It's like you make it so that they don't clump up. So the Thor splash doesn't work too well. These two final Banshees will be able to cloak, come in, and take out this hatchery after all. And the Overseer is nowhere to be seen. Uh, so these Banshees may even come in and do even more damage. And look, it is full, full uh, energy, which means it will be cloaked for quite a while. So we do need the Overseer to come in. Here is the Overseer, and then the Mutalist should be able to finish off this Banshee. 
and the, and the other banshee will flee, and the overseer needs to be controlled well to stay in range of these banshees. Uh, and there we go, one 